Welcome to Creekside Online. Our mission is to reach the world with Jesus one person at a time with Christ, community, and compassion. We are so glad that you're joining us today. If it was your very first time, please take a moment to click the link below and fill out the online connect card. We would love for you to stay connected throughout the week and everywhere you go. And the best way to do that is through our church app. There you can watch additional messages and find resources to help you grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's free and you can download it wherever you download your apps. For us, church is much more than just a weekend experience. And we want you to know that there's a place perfect for you at Creekside. No matter where you're watching today, let's get ready for what God has in store for us. Church, I, I, I got to tell you, man, we've been in this series that is dear and near to my heart because I honestly know if we begin to practice these things that we've been talking about, I mean, your life trajectory, true change will come in everybody's life. That is my hope. That is my dream. That is my prayer for you. As we've gone through this living in the overflow, it's really about building our lives on Christ, on his principles in the Bible. You know Christ came. If you believe in him, he came for our good. He came for our good and to give us an abundant life a fulfilling life, a rich life, but it, it also requires that we have to kind of step into the path of his blessing. And that's what we want to talk about. We're going to kind of do a pivot and a shift today a little bit in this series. And the subtitle is Compassion in Action. And you're going to see we are actually challenged in each one of us this month to start stepping in the way of that blessing of God. And uh, I'm really excited because today... Uh, I'm going to introduce you to the guy that wrote this book that I've been recommending. The soul strength that we've been talking about, and maybe you've picked it up in the Next Steps area. Several have, and they're beginning to look at it. And I'll tell you, it's all about relationships, all about doing life better. It's really an incredible book. But uh, we have actually flown in the author to this book, Dr. Alan Algram, and he's going to be talking to us today. So I'm so excited for you to hear from him and uh, I'm going to have him come up right now. We give a warm welcome to Alan as I keep talking about him. So Alan is an author. He is also a leader. He's, he's led a mega church out in Colorado, great big church out there, and a mentor. As a result, uh, he's been mentoring pastors all over the United States. And in fact, he just spent a little bit of time, a couple of days, mentoring some guys down in St. Augustine and uh, has such rich wisdom because of that. He's an incredible speaker. We're so excited uh, for him to be here today. And uh, I've, I've talked to him quite often. He leads these covenant groups groups, these covenant ministries for pastors to keep pastors healthy. I don't know if you're familiar, but pastors are struggling all over the United States, especially through COVID and different things. And this is an incredible ministry to build up our churches. And so that's why you're going to really get a lot out of this message today. And I want to introduce him to you by just kind of bantering a little bit and having a little fun with some questions, Alan. Is this like cutting into my time? A little bit. <laughs> A little bit, but uh, it's just got to, yeah, come on. <laughs> so I, I just need to ask you, are you an Android or an iPhone person? iPhone. Oh, that was quick. Good. All right. You already got some fans out there. Very good. I could so, talk to you. I need some help. Okay. 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 <laughs> How about singing or dancing? Well, of course, I'd be incredible at both, but um, <laughs> probably more singing because my wife is embarrassed by any attempt at dancing with uh, me of okay. me okay okay fiction or non-fiction in books um i go non-fiction non-fiction oh wow okay yeah stay away from that fiction stuff no i read some of it but yeah. i i just like I'm, I'm looking for solid stuff so okay well we'll see now whether or not your forecast is fiction or non-fiction so next week, the Super Bowl is playing. So we have the Chiefs versus the Eagles. Do you have a pick? I, I definitely have a preference. Ah, okay. Okay. Definitely go with uh, my close friend, Patrick. Uh, I wish he was, but uh, <laughs> I go with the Chiefs. Okay. All right, go with the Chiefs. All right, there we go. 
And I'll ask a question. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Linda, Uh-oh. your wife couldn't be here today, but we know that she'll visit us from time to time she'll because be you weeks. come through yeah. here sometimes, yeah. and we'll see her. But uh, you're making Valentine's me nervous, Jack. I know, I know. She's probably watching online, so be careful now. Favorite gift to Linda during Valentine's is it chocolate or roses? Oh, she'd go dark chocolate, absolutely. All right, absolutely. there we go. Let's okay. give a warm welcome again to Doctor Dalton. Well. <clears throat> It is a delight, delight, delight for me to be here with you today, and uh, <clears throat> frankly, it's a little bit of a surprise. I've only been here a couple times uh, prior, visiting with uh, my family, and uh, here I am. Uh, okay, so I am curious. How many here have only been here, worshipped here, it could be your first time, but first or second time here. How many in that category? You've only been here once or twice. Let me see who you are. Okay. All right. I, okay. 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 Great. All right. Now, I've got some news for you. <clears throat> you could be the next guest preacher here. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm truly, I mean, evidently all it takes is you just come a couple times and you get invited to speak. <laughs> so, Think about this. If you were, like I've I've been here two times, and then here I am, okay? If you were invited to speak, what topic, you could pick any topic, what topic would you preach on? Now, Pastor Chuck first surprised me, and he did with this opportunity. He then surprised me again with the topic. I want you to know I did not pick this topic. As it happens, I am delighted with the surprise assignment because I just told him again this morning, this is one of my all-time favorites. That's because I believe the decision to live generously will absolutely change the trajectory of your life and even the legacy of your life. I know this is true. So, are you ready for God to surprise you today, and for God to use you to surprise others. Yes. Well, one person, okay. Uh, and let me ask this seriously. Are you ready for God to surprise you today? Okay. Ready for God to use you to surprise others? Well, this is going to surprise Chuck. Okay. So, last minute kind of deal. Here's how this goes. Listen carefully. I was not expecting to do this until just a few moments ago. I want you to realize it's a cashless society. We all get that. Everybody's right. But what you got to do is this. You got to ask somebody near you. You're going to have 20 seconds. Do you have any cash you would be willing to share that you will not get back? Cash that would be used as a sermon illustration. Okay. Ask somebody else, this can't be you, you, they've got to ask you, okay? Let's see what happens. 20 seconds to ask somebody else, you got any cash you would be willing to give up to use for a sermon illustration, and I want you two to see who you might ask, maybe standing right here, I'm eating my own cooking. Are you ready, set, go. 20 seconds. Uh, Come here. You get the dude. No, Andrew, Andrew, Emily, come here, come here. All right, all right. Are you going to ask me anything? Uh, do you have any cash? cash? Okay, all right, okay, Thank you. okay, all right. All right, now, uh, I just picked on um, my two favorite grandkids here, okay? Uh, so if anybody gave you cash that they would be, they're letting go of, They'll never see it again, okay? Would you bring it to the front right now, please? Right here. Could it, hurry, 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 hurry. Fast, fast, fast. Bring the cash up right up here. Okay. Okay. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're cutting into my time. Hurry, 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 hurry. All right. Now, remember, this is uh, it's crazy, isn't it? It's the craziest thing. All right. And this is where Chuck's a little nervous right now. Okay. So... <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, here we go. Okay, now, in just a moment, as soon as it's down here, 
Then I'm going to ask Andrew and Emily, this, you guys will never forget this. Your responsibility is going to be to come get this and count it up, okay? And each of you have a pile, but in a minute, I'm going to ask you how much is there. Okay, so as soon as they all right, now I'm going to keep talking. All right, thank you. All right, so life is filled with surprises. No one really knows what's going to happen next. Oh, yeah. And that's why we're called to live by faith and not by sight. Life is a never-ending series of unexpected happenings. Life clarifying experiences. For example, some years ago, our neighborhood was shocked by a brazen burglary. Family near us was vacationing in Italy, and their house was burglarized. And to make matters worse, it happened repeatedly over several days, get this, in broad daylight. There were a lot of construction vehicles. Nobody thought anything about it. Big-time burglary going on. What's really amazing is that the break-ins were not discovered until most everything of value was taken from the house. As our, later, our friends later told us, the thieves took half of our things, half, and it was the good half. How would you feel if you lost half of your stuff, and it was the good half. Right now, some of you are wondering, honey, did you lock the door? Nice. Anybody wonder about that right now? Like, uh uh-oh. Well, here's the good news. Truth be told, most of us could get along quite well with only half of the stuff that we possessed. (laughs) But that still doesn't keep us from where we're going to lose it, right? Or adding to it. Well, uh, today we're continuing in this theme, um, uh, living in the, what is it, overflow? Overflow? You were talking about this, I'm thinking, Jesus said in John 7, those who trust in me, believe in me, out of them will flow rivers of living water. Hmm. I've been preaching for 50 years, ever since dirt was invented, I started preaching, right? And I've addressed a variety of things, but truth be told, I have seen more life change happen with this theme than most any other. Our theme, the things that matter most aren't things. Therefore, the key to blessing is not getting more, but trusting more and giving more. Now, we all have a lot of things, and most of us enjoy most of the things that we have. It's just that we'd still like to have a few more things. By the way, the two of you are supposed to be helping me. Come on. Come on, could you come up here, please? Gather all this stuff. Andrew, get, get. All right, then go back there and count. Nicole, Joel, make sure they don't pocket any of this, okay? Watch them, okay? All right. <clears throat> the challenge we have is thinking biblically because we're swimming against the culture on this, guys. This is what the Bible says. Solomon says this in Proverbs 3. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Malachi, prophet Malachi, last book of the Old Testament, says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in the temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you, and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Put me to the test. The only time that phrase is used in Scripture. Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I don't know if you've noticed it before or not, but the Bible frequently talks about money and material things. Jesus said more about that subject than about heaven and hell. In fact, Jesus frequently used money as an illustration, which is what we're doing today. And he talked about money actually as a means of blessing. So what if, just I'm going to ask you the question, think about this. What if the key to blessing is not getting more, but trusting more and giving more. I found an article in Money Magazine years back on the topic of three ways to cut financial stress. Anybody want to cut that? I was intrigued that the author noted that writing a check was among the top three most important things to do. 
Isn't that crazy? According to a study done at the University of British Columbia, they noted that even when students donated cash to other players in a simple game, they had decreased levels of the stress hormone uh, cortisol. Now, this day, we were playing Monopoly, weren't we, guys, last time I was here? Who won big time, by the way? On that? I'm just curious. I, I, I refresh my memory. Who won? Oh, that was me. That's right. I had piles of money. Piles of money. Did I give you any? No, I did not. If I had, I could have decreased my stress level. Another psychologist noted that whenever we donate uh, money, it actually helps restore or validate a positive self-image. Now, Jesus wasn't first concerned about your positive self-image, okay? <laughs> but about calling you and me to a positive purpose. That purpose is to honor God by partnering with God. We're never more like God than when we give. You ever heard of John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he, what was that? He, what? Hmm. Giving is vital to a growing love relationship with God and a growing trust in God. Someone has said it's not that generous giving makes one righteous. Rather, the one who is righteous will give generously. Giving is at the core about trusting God. And trusting God is closely linked to enjoy enjoying a greater blessing from God. Now, Jesus made that um, clear. I know you can hardly wait to see what's going to happen with this. You know, keep your eye on those two kids. Do not let them leave the room, okay? <clears throat> I told them, come to church. You know what? This is going to be the best sermon you ever heard your grandpa preach. Because they've never heard their grandpa preach. <laughs> they've been living in other countries of the world. Now they're here. Now, okay, you're never going to forget this, are you guys? Oh, no. So, Say, well, yeah, I want to give, give us something from the Bible. Quit talking about your grandkids. I'm not done with them. Okay, Luke 21. You probably heard of this before, and if you're not a believer yet, you may have heard allusion to this. Jesus looked up. He saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow who put in two small, very small copper coins, Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Now, my sister's pastor, Greg Surratt, noted, I love this line, Jesus is taking notes on your generosity. Question, do you keep good notes on your own generosity? Do you keep good financial records? Now, when our kids were growing up, we taught them the 10 10 80 plan. And that's give at least 10%, save at least 10%, and carefully manage the rest. Now, that pattern has served our family and our church family in Colorado very well. Now, as the most of you, we love to give to Christ honoring work, especially through our local church. Mark Moore said when we give through the church, we make Jesus famous. When we give as individuals, we make ourselves famous. I want to make Jesus famous. Don't you? I want people to come to Jesus. Therefore, we give most of what we give through the church of Jesus. I would much rather the church be the channel of my generosity and oversee my generosity than the government. Is there an amen out there? Anybody? All right. Therefore, I keep very good financial records. Having been audited twice by the IRS, my apologies to any IRS agents here, sort of, but oh man, you don't want to go through that. I can tell you, and they, they were auditing my charitable giving, I can tell you just how important it is to keep good financial records. Oh yeah. However, that means that someone at the church has to keep those records. If I'm going to make a tax-deductible gift, someone has to know what we give. But, whoa, wait a minute, now! Didn't Jesus warn us not to give so that others would see us? Yes, he did. That's in Matthew 6. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what's done in secret, your father who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. 
Clearly, both the motive and the manner of what we give are noted in heaven so that we will receive a heavenly blessing. However, I don't think that we forfeit a blessing if someone might find out. But we do forfeit a blessing if we're giving so that others will find out. That would mean that we're really giving to make ourselves famous, not Jesus. Now, what might this blessing be? Now, I wonder about that. I suspect it'll be the fulfillment of realizing all the eternal good that was accomplished through what we gave while we're on earth. The largest financial gift our, Linda and I have ever made, uh, bar, bar none, was when we launched the second campus. It was the $20 million campus. We, no, we did not give it all ourselves. But uh, we did something like... Uh, uh, that was way beyond anything we'd ever, and we'd led many financial campaigns. And every time I go to that campus, I consider it, my, I'll tell Linda, I'm just checking on our ROI. You know what that is? Return on investment. I mean, the things that are happening out there, people coming to faith, it is amazing. When we get to heaven, we will be privileged to see the things as they truly are, to celebrate that we partnered with God in ushering others into his eternal embrace. And that's why the greatest portion of our giving should be directed to efforts that bring people to Christ and build them up in the faith. Note, the widow brought her offering where? To the temple. Why the temple? That was the central place of worship for the Jewish people. The bringing of their first fruits, a tithe, or 10% of everything they received, was considered to be a worship requirement to the Jewish people. However, their giving didn't stop at 10%. They also gave offerings beyond that. In fact, some argue that we really don't begin to give generously until we exceed the level of 10% of our income. Now, I've long held that view myself. I know the same is true for Chuck. Tithing is the beginning of our stewardship, not the ending. It is a great place to start. It is a lousy place to stop. But most people, even most Christian people, never even get close to the level of 10%. Less than a tithe. This is shocking. Less than a tithe of Christians tithe. What? Less than 10% give a full 10%. Most hover somewhere around 2 to 3%. Now, at our church in Colorado, it's much higher than that because we teach on this because we believe in this, the blessing of this. We even repeatedly offer a money-back guarantee for those who try tithing for 90 days. That is, those who promise to tithe through the church for 90 days and then face financial issues, they don't see any blessing, and they were tithing, that they, they get all the money back. So, you've got a couple options a day. You can do that through Creekside. If you don't want to do that, I know a church in Colorado that uh, <laughs> will guarantee, all right, this. Okay, you cannot outgive God. But it all begins with trusting. One of the great joys of my ministry has been hearing from those who have discovered the joys of giving beyond 10% of their income. Oh, man. I got a friend now who's like, he said, first time he came to Rocky Mountain, a business guy. He was a lead, leader in a little church way out east of us. And he heard me talk about tithing. He told his wife on the way home from church, last year we gave $300. We got to fix that. Fix it, they have. This guy, unbelievable what they have done and are doing in the kingdom of God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's a millionaire next door. You'd never guess it. You'd never guess it. He likes to make money. You know why? He says, to give it away. And is he ever. Now, it's easier to be generous, actually, not when you're like my buddy Dell, but when you don't have much. Jesus noted that the poor widow dropped in Two lepta, those are two smallest coins. Now, all the studies show that lower income people typically give a higher percentage of their income. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, but it's true. Often, the more money we have, the more our money has us. We start thinking in terms of security. We start thinking in terms of investment. We start thinking in terms of improving our standard of living. Randy Alcorn says, God prospers me not to raise my standard of living, but to raise my standard of giving. When we get extra money, our tendency is often to think in terms of how we might spend it or save it. 
rather than how we might share it. And the greater amounts that we get, the greater is temptation to keep greater and greater amounts. Now, I believe, this is going to shock some of you, if I haven't already <laughs> and not done, there are three levels of generosity. First, the devotion level, that's returning, technically returning the first 10% to God. It's His anyway. And that's what God's Word uh, clearly teaches. So technically, technically, you're not actually giving, uh, but simply returning the first part of what's been entrusted to you. The second level is the inspiration level, giving something beyond the tithe as the Spirit prompts. It gives you something extra. I, I, I want to do something with that, whatever that is. And then there's this revelation level, responding to the clear call of God with radical life-altering generosity that may surprise you and shock others if they actually knew. Now, what might be the next level for you? I'm going to show you something that you will never, well, for a long, long time, forget. You, you, this is a story that will inspire you and humble you. Watch this. I had an accident and my hip was broken in so many pieces. I have two rods in my hip. She's an angel among us. If you watch her in the bread company, everyone comes in to see Catherine. You know, we sell the bread, but I feel like there are some people who specifically come with prayer requests and uh, I go pray for them. One day when we were sharing, she said she was in need of a different car, that her car was needing expensive repairs. I had been saving money, but uh, I knew it wasn't enough, so I knew I would take a few years to save for it. So a couple of months later, I went in and I said, Catherine, how's your car fund coming? And she said, I gave it all away. And I looked at her and, and she said, there was a widow in need, and I gave her the $5,000. I struggled a lot when I gave that money. And uh, I said, I feel okay, but uh, do you think I did the right thing? I mean, I cannot give what I don't have, so I just gave what I had. I was shocked, and so I come home and I tell Pete that we needed to help Catherine with her car fund. He looked at me and he said, no, I think we need to buy Catherine a car. And I said, okay, great. Pete called Scott and said, do you know Catherine Great Harvest? And he said, yes, he did. Pete said, well, we'd like to buy her a car. He asked Pete, do you want to use your new car? And it just hit him right in the face. Why would he ask me that? Of course I would want a used car. That's good enough. He just paused for a moment and he said, I want a new car. And he said it was silent on the phone for a few seconds. And Scott said, whoa, I want to help. And so he pitched in some. So she came to the bakery and uh, she asked me, if you were to buy a car, what kind of a car would you like? I said, Debbie. I'm not really planning to buy a car, but she said, oh, just tell me. And she said, I'd like a SUV cruise control, and she said, I'd like a light color. And we called Scott, and he said, I think I've got the perfect car. So Pete said, can we deliver it tomorrow? So we have the bread company owner and his family, Scott and his family and our family, and Catherine sees us all coming in, and she's just all excited to see everyone. And uh, I went to give them hugs, and I said, what's Pete doing here? I did have the, the biggest idea. When I went out,
And so we walked her over to the car. We said, Catherine, this is your new car. So, oh, this is for me. This is for me. I said, oh, I, I knew God had many cars, but I didn't know he had a new one for me. So, God had new cars? We all stood there in tears as we saw the joy on Catherine's face. And we got to be a part of it. And the joy of that was unbelievable. I felt so right. It was such an excitement to drive it. We told Catherine that we would like this to be confidential. But I kept running into people who would say, I heard what you did for Catherine. It wasn't even us, it was Catherine. It all started with Catherine giving of what she had to a widow to help her, and it just continues on. Generosity begets generosity. We don't give in order to receive. We give because it's the nature of Jesus Christ. He gave us his life. So we, we have the, the DNA of Jesus Christ of giving. <laughs> yeah, so this is one story I will never forget in my life. Is that not amazing? Every time I see that. By the way, did you spot the license plate? You know what that was? J, Jireh, for those of you who know, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Could that be put on your car? We're never more like God than when we give. Todd Harper has said, I've never met an unhappy, generous person. <laughs> It's been said that the only antidote for the materialism of our time is giving because giving is the opposite of greed. Henry Nouwen says, in order to become like the Father, we must be as generous as the Father is generous. Every time I take a step in the direction of generosity, I know that I'm moving from fear, we'll have enough, we'll be okay, to faith, to love. The key to blessing is not getting more, but trusting. Trusting more, giving more. In fact, giving sets off, as you're going to see, an exponential cycle of blessing. I love Psalm 112. They share freely, they give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered. Their good deeds, maybe not you, but their deeds are going to be remembered forever. They'll have influence and honor. When I uh, read that one day, I penciled in my Bible, joyful generosity is the finest legacy. How? Do you want to be remembered? Okay, let's have some fun. Okay, guys, um, Andrew, Emily, you're pretty good with math. Well, maybe not great, but um, if you like me. But um, how much is in that pile? $1,198. $1,198. Chuck, does this exceed your expectation? Yeah. We, won't even talk. we just talked about this before we walked in here. Well, let's see what happens. Okay. Put it in two piles. All right. Now. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I really need your help. I remember there's a couple over here. There's a little gal right in here. It's the only ones I can see with the lights on my face. I need two volunteers, okay, who would be, be willing to do this for us. Take half of this pile and think of somebody, some cause, Christ-honoring cause that make you feel good, that would bless in Jesus' name, but you cannot give it back to this church. Remember, the money was given to give away, okay? Now, would anybody that raised their hand as first, second time people be willing to help me out? I don't, I'm not going to be embarrassed standing up here, okay? Would somebody do that, okay? Okay, would you come, please? I need one more. One more of the guests. Okay. okay. Oh, how about that? Come on. Oh, all right, so here's how this goes. Now, um, well, you could do it. Uh, so uh, bless them with this, okay? Make sure you get their 
Uh, driver's license, get information from them. Uh, no, no, no. All right, but, uh, all right, so would you do this? You got the deal, you know, something that stirs you, that moves you, that'll be blessing to somebody that's not give it back to the church, but then would you be kind enough, that's Chuck Peter and the pastor here, um, and then find, somehow get information to him on what happened, okay? Is that a deal? Let's thank them for helping, okay? All right. Joyful generosity. Joyful generosity. No. Joyful generosity. If it's a man, man, keep it. Keep it. It's like invite somebody over for dinner and you're all upset about what they're eating. No, no, no. Oh, joyful generosity is the finest legacy. How do you want to be remembered? On the last day, it's not going to matter uh, the house you live in, the car you drove, the size of your 401k. The only thing that's going to matter is what we did with Jesus. With Jesus. And for Jesus. You remember way back, an hour and a half ago, whenever I started preaching, <laughs> about the neighbors who um, had half their stuff stolen. Which half was it? The good half. I talked with them when they returned. I'll never forget this moment. They returned from their Italian vacation, and I was amazed at how unaffected they were by the burglary. I told them, when I was nine years old, somebody broke into our house in Chicago, and they stole stuff, and I was so angry. In fact, they broke a window and a door to get in, and there was blood there, and I was happy about it. I'm, not, I'm a little embarrassed to tell you that, but I was like, that guy, I hope they, not that Bled a lot, you know. <laughs> I was really upset. And so I told Brian and Andrea this. And um, they said, well, Alan, um, the timing of the burglary is what was so amazing. Not just because we were in Italy at the time, but because we had just toured the village of Assisi where St. Francis had lived centuries ago. It was a Roman Catholic parent. Francis had been born into the home of a wealthy merchant but gave it all up to serve the poor. His sacrificial lifestyle eventually led to a great affection from the people of his village and caused great inspiration worldwide, and that inspiration continues to this day, as it is right now, so I'm telling you this. In fact, our neighbors were exceedingly inspired, inspired by his example when they were touring the village of Assisi and heard this story all over again. Get this. As they boarded the tour bus, they were gripped with his extraordinary legacy of generosity. As they boarded the tour bus, they got the call from Colorado about the burglary and the report that half of their stuff had been taken, and they were completely unshaken. Why? they immediately realized that the most important things in life aren't things at all. What would it take for you, for me, to realize the same thing and to move beyond the tyranny of stuff, the tyranny of things? Hopefully, it won't be a burglary or a deathbed discovery. By God's grace, may we each determine to live for that which will live on throughout all eternity. Maybe each determined to enjoy a rich relationship with God and a legacy of generosity in the kingdom of God. This I know, the things that matter most aren't things. Therefore, the key to blessing is not getting more, but trusting more, and therefore giving more. As followers of Christ, we are all on a journey of generosity. I know this is true. Some here are ahead of me on this journey. Others are maybe somewhere behind. But all of us are blessed more than we know. Each of us is blessed to be a blessing. As the Apostle Paul said, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. May God's richest blessing continue to flow to you and through you as you learn to excel in the grace of giving. Because this I know, it will surprise you with delight it will change 
the trajectory of your life. Andrew, Emily, forever. As Todd Harper has said, I have never met an unhappy, generous person. So, my friends, how happy, how stress-free do you want to be? Lord, thank you for the uh, inspiring and humbling story of Catherine. What she illustrated is staggering to us. Staggering. Lord, help us to live on high alert to the opportunities you're bringing to us. Thank you for what you have trusted us with. Help us to trust you. Partner with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We hope the message you just listened to had an impact on you. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at CreeksideChristian.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Creekside Christian Church. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. We love you, and we'll see you next time.